Hi, LCC 150D, Statistics for Informed Decision Making. We're going to look at Chapter 3 for this tutorial and give you some ideas on what's important and what you need to know to be able to be solving these types of equations. But first, let's look at what normal distribution really means. So I found this site here, and the site's going to give us some interactive types of uh, information. First of all, from previous chapters, you saw that when you collect data, you can put them in a histogram. This is the histogram here. And you can see this is the type of the data that can be just counted. So it doesn't matter what it is in this case. But what's important is that when people try to do a normal curve, a bell curve, they try to fit data underneath a curve like this. So if you had a professor who gave a test and graded on the bell curve, what he tried to do or she tried to do is fit the grades under here, found a mean or an average, and then found a de standard deviation. Remember from chapter 2, standard deviation tells you how close the numbers are. The closer the number, the smaller standard deviation, the better your data is. The wider the distribution, the wider and the larger is your standard deviation. It's not so, it's not as good. So you want to be able to make those decisions and that's what we're trying to lead up to here. As we get uh, further on in the course, You'll be able to look at this information, see if it makes sense, and if it's worthwhile. Just to play along here, you can add light and grid lines, dark grid lines, and so on. But let's change the, uh, st the standard deviation to 1. And you can see now that it's changed a little bit. If we change it to, let's say, 1.2, now it's a little bit wider, and that is good. But if we change it to something a little bit smaller, like 0.1, and I'm not sure you can get that, 0.41 is the closest. So 0.41 is the furthest you can go. So now you can see it's even tighter. So more of the information is underneath the curve. All right? If you, again, remember from uh, other statistics uh, content areas that we looked at, the more trials you have, the closer the numbers get better. Now you're really getting some tight information here. So you have a small standard deviation and a lot of trials and it's almost all underneath the curve so let's go back to our talk here why do we have normal distribution because we want to standardize information we want to see how well our population fits under the curve if you took an IQ test that's a standardized score it gives you a mean and it tells you how far apart the numbers are if you took an SAT test it's also standardized your height is standardized compared to all the other people in the United States, for instance, or men and women of certain ages. If you had a baby and it was, a, it was growing up and as a toddler or an infant, it was measured and weighed, you probably knew what percentile it was. If it was underweight or a little shorter than normal, you were in a lower percentile. If you have a child that's in school and takes standardized tests and comes back and brags that he or she's in the 96th, 97th, and 98th percentile, that means they're way up here and that everybody else is down there. So that's what a normal distribution does. So it gives you the mean. Is the mean that goes right smack in the middle. That's where, that's where most of the people are. Just do, think of these as the number of people. So the most people in this group right up here. And then standard deviation tells us how far we are from the mean okay I do not want you to practice using the large equation as I mentioned from the last tutorial use Excel to find standard deviation the way we write the standard deviation is that we know the mean this is the letter mu M U pronounce mu it's a Greek letter standard deviation this is Sigma S I G M A that's another Greek letter that's a lowercase Sigma and then this is the way we notate it. N for normal parentheses we put our mean first and then we put the standard deviation and this is what it looks like again here's our mean with a standard deviation another one here with a standard deviation but notice that this is wider this is shorter this is this would give you better information you can say most people are here because we have a very tall a very tall very high mean here but this is a better one because the clo the numbers are closer to each other there's a 68, 95, 99.7 rule for any normal curve, any. That means your height, your weight, uh, the uh, SAT scores, IQ, and so on. So 68% uh, of the observations fall within one standard deviation of the mean, 95, 2, 99.7, 3. What's that mean? It means that here's the mean, 
and there's a standard deviation, so 68% of your data fall in here. So 68% of the IQs in America fall in this way. 95 fall between two standard deviations on each side, and 3, 99.7. Now it should add up to 100, but we do have some areas here that are very small. If you have, are you in this area, an outlier, you're way beyond what the normal distribution is. Same thing goes for on that side of the curve. So you can see the drawing which is right from your book and one standard deviation two, three. Now back in 1976-1980 I qualified for this study I don't remember being asked but I was an adult, well I was a man between the age of 18 and 24 so you can figure out the math and see how old your professor is but 18 and 24 so there was my height and I was about so I was about uh, 5 feet 11 inches, so a little bit taller. This is 5 feet 10. This was the mean of these men that were examined at this time. And the standard deviation is 2.8 inches. So 2.8 inches on each side, 2.8 inches on the other side would be one standard deviation away. So here's how we would write it. There's the N, normal distribution, mean, 2.8. The next thing is for the 68, 95, 99.7 rule for men's heights, we have one standard deviation from both sides. This is how it's found. Take 70, add, subtract 2.8, and 68% of the people, of the men, are in this range. For 95%, it's this range, and that's how it's found there. Two standard deviations, 5.6 on each side. And finally, 99.73, 61.678.4. .6, and that's found by 3 times 2.8, 61.6. So that's 5 feet 1.6. And this is 6 feet 8.4. So that 99.7% that of the men are in between this range. Now, those who are very tall or very short are beyond. So you can see that if you're over 6 feet 8, you're an anomaly. You're an outlier. So a good percentage of the National Basketball Association players are outliers. But not everyone. So let's look at some problems here what proportion of men are less than 72.8 inches tall this is why you use a normal distribution so here's 70 that's our mean 72.8 is the number we're looking for how many people percentage wise men in this age group are in this blue area so we can do this by just taking a one standard deviation away it is actually 2.8 so this one's gonna be a little bit easier It's another standard deviation away so we know that there's 68 percent of the people in this area and we know that that means it's 32 left over from 100 that means it's 16 on the left side 16 on the right side so if we add those up we get 84 percent so 84 percent of the men in America at this time were shorter than 72.8 inches tall 84 percent so anybody above you could tell now there's going to be 16 percent of the population is above this height so that one is able, you are able to do this by just manipulating the uh, normal distribution curve with percentages. But sometimes you don't have a question that falls nicely on a standard deviation. What proportion of men are less than 68 inches tall? So it looks like this. Here's your 70, the mean, 68%. Now that's not a standard deviation away. Remember, 2.8 was the standard deviation. So now we have to do a little bit of math. Oh my gosh. So how many standard, we have to find out how many standard deviations is 68 from 70. So we do a little calculation here. So we're going to find a standard normal distribution. That means the mean is zero standard deviation. one. We're going to change it. Now all of this stuff here, the standardized variable and standardized score can be found with a z-score. This is what z-score means. Any number that you have, your height, your IQ, your, a, your weight, that can be in a normal distribution that can be found through a z-score and that's going to be a standardized score so if you are 70 inches tall you can standardize this if you have an IQ of 110 you can standardize this the way you standardize it is take your number 70 for your height or 115 for your IQ or your baby's height or your baby's weight that's the, the variable there subtract the mean from it and then divide by the standard deviation so this formula you need to know how to use it it's in the book quite often, but make sure you know how to use this formula. Very important. So this is how it's used. Again, the question was how many standard deviations is 68 from 70? So we're going to find the z-score, the standardized score. So this is the equation. So they take the 68 minus 70. 
Let's go back. 68 minus 70. And they're going to divide by the standard deviation 2.8. So here's the 2.8 right there. And you get point z negative 0 0.71. So that now you've just changed that 68 to a standardized z score. You can do a lot with this z score. And what can you do? is that you can find the proportion of men who are in this area and below. And how do you do that? You take the standardized score, the z-score, and go to the back of the book. In the back of the book from page 690 to 691 in table A is the standard normal table. That will give you the percentages. So, and we look up the closest standardized score z in the table that we have and find the probability to the left of the standardized score. This is part of the table. It's on the top of the table. But this is uh, an example of the, the uh, score. So I'm going to go into the textbook. And here's the textbook. And here in the back of your book is table A right up here. You can see it's highlighted right there. And we're going to find the z-score that we just found in 5%. So this is the z-score on the left-hand side. And this is the 100 spot. So we're going to read the z-score going down and then add the hundreds. In this area we have the percentage. This is the percentage. So z-scores continue all the way down to the next page. You can see that and then there's what we're talking about. It's the percentage below our z-score. We're going to need this page because if we go back to here we're looking for the z-score that we found. The z-score is negative 0 0.71. So let's go to negative 0 0.71. Here's a negative 0, 0.7. Now we have to find the 1. So we go up here, the 1. That's 1 in the 100 spot. So we go down and we read this number, 0.2389. We can round that off to 24%. So let's see if they found that. So we are going in the book. There's 0.2389. Find right there. Uh, never mind that. 0.2389. So that's 24%. So what proportion of men are less than 68 inches tall? 0.2389 or 24%. 24% of the men are 68 in inches or shorter. And of course, if you want to find out how much and greater, just subtract from 100 and you get 76.1. So 76% of the men are taller than 68 inches. So that's using the z-score to find the proportion or the ratio. Now, how tall must a man, this is another example, how tall must a man be to place in the lower 10%? So now you know the percentage. You know the percentage, but you need to find this number. So we're going to go back to the book and go backwards. We're going to, we know the percentage, find the z-score, and work backwards. So what we just did, we're going to work backwards from. So this is what they're saying right here. We've got the closest probability of 0 0.10 in a table and find the z-score. So let's find the z-score first. So we're going to go to the table, find 0 0.10. So if we look for 0 0.10 in this table, this is the area we're looking at. That 0 0.10 is our percentile, is our percentage. So we have over here 0 0.10 and uh, I'm sorry, is it 0 0.10 or 0 0.01? I already forgot, 0 0.10. Okay, so 0 0.10, we're looking for 0 0.10. We have a 0.0968. And we have a 0.103. There's one here, 0.1003. It's three thousandths away from 0.1. And if we look at this number, it's 0.095, which is 15,000. So it's a little bit further away. So this is the number we're going to use. So that's a percentage. That's as close to 0.10%, 10% of the population. That's 10%. So what's the z score? Well, what you do is you go here, it's negative 1.2. Go up to find the 100 spot, so negative 1.28. So hopefully, they've done the same thing. One, negative 1 1.2, there it is here, so they should choose, they did. The negative 1.28 is what we have over here, negative 1.28. So now all we did was find z-score, but we have to find this question mark. What is that number? So you remember the z e equation right here? Well, we're going to solve for the x. That's the number, that's the variable, that's your height, your IQ, your kid's height, his or her Iowa test score. So, we know Z now, negative 1.28, we just found it. We know mu, 70. 2.28 is our standard deviation, we're going to find the X. So they solve for X, this is just changing the equation to solve for X. So when they do that, they get 66.42, here's the math, 66.42. That is the height. 
So a man would have to be approximately 66.42 inches tall or less to place in the lower 10%. That's the equation. So 66.42 would be right here. That would go right here. 66.42. That gives us 10% of the population. And you can figure out what 90% of the population, they are taller than 66.42 inches. So now one more thing is there is an interactive uh, in your stats book, there's an interactive, uh, I'm sorry, interactive sheet here. You go back to the book, if I can find the book. And um, the next section I just want to show is a statistical applet that's in your online and your site. When you go for the quizzes, you can look at student resources. And it just gives you an idea of how to look at different types of curves for normal distribution. You can change the mean. Like we just did the height, 70, and 2.28. I'm changing the numbers and updating. So this is what it looks like. And you can change, and putting these green flags to show the numbers, and 70 is our median here. Okay, so it's 0.5 would be our standard z-score and 67.72 would be the number that you see there but if you hold on the top you can see the number even closer 68 so if you wanted to know where people are in terms of height under 64.9 or 65 inches it takes a little bit of playing around then you can get an idea of what the z-score is going to be and what the percentage is going to be so you can change this for any of the uh, numbers that you have. It is a statistical applet. It's a normal curve. It's underneath your. Uh, it's in as one of your choices. So let me know if you have any questions, and uh, we'll talk to you later.